Hey guys, it's Kevin from Ministry Boost, and I'm excited today to be with my friend Shane. Uh, Shane, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. How, how, are, how are things over there in Hotland? Great, man. Yeah, it's going great, man. We're we're excited about everything that's happening, and uh, it's hot. Probably not as hot as where you guys are in Phoenix, but man, it's, <laughs> no, it's like a thousand five today or something. I yeah, for for sure. So, Shane, first, thanks for your time, man. You're you're an expert in in the student ministry area, and uh, before we keep going, man, with our boost, why don't you tell kind of our viewers who you are and uh, the church that you're at and some information about your ministry? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I am at Mission Community Church in Gilbert, Arizona. Uh, we're on the east side of, of Phoenix. Everything is Phoenix in Arizona, but we're in the East Valley. Um, I've been here for, gosh, eight years actually attending this church. My wife and I, uh, right after we got married, started coming here. And then I've been on staff for about five. It'll be five in just a couple months. Um, and have been the youth pastor overseeing both junior high and high school for the past few years now. So I love it. We've been through a lot of transition, but it's it's a really good season and really excited for everything that's ahead. Uh, I also mentioned, this is what's most important to me, uh, my, my wife, uh, her name is Heather, and we have two little boys, Asher and Oliver, that are just maniacs in the best way. So Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Maniacs. Yeah. Well. well, man, you're you're such a great young leader and, and just a stellar student pastor. So the purpose of Ministry Boost is kind of give a larger audience just these little boosts that can help take their ministry to the next le- level. So uh, you've prepared some, man. So just right out of the gate, yeah. go ahead and share with us. Uh, what are some things that have helped you boost your ministry? Yeah, definitely. Um, that's a really great question. I was thinking about it some, and and it's hard to narrow it down because there's a there's a bunch of different things I think we all try to implement, we all try to do. But when I thought about those three, the first one that pops into my mind is just an unapologetic strategy. And that sounds kind of mm-hmm. funny. It's a little little wordy, but what I mean by that is I've noticed that there, there's so many youth ministries that seem as though they run from week to week, event to event. And then just start yeah. the cycle all over again. And and weekly, that, that's a that's a heavy burden to bear. I, I think that you have to have a strategy that's directly tied to your mission. You've got to be connected to where you're leading teenagers and how you're you're empowering small group leaders or whatever you may have um, to lead those teenagers in that direction. So that's that's really been important for us. And the reason why I say unapologetic is because if you implement a strategy that is laser focused, that is moving toward your mission, you're, you're going to have to stop doing some things or you're going to have to start doing yeah. some things and not everybody's going to like those things. So you, you shouldn't be a jerk. But at the same time, I, I think leadership, it, it requires to take some bold steps and, and make some bold moves. So that's really been big for us. It's, it's led to a lot of change over these past few years. But but having a laser-focused strategy and our mission statement is to lead teenagers to find thriving life in Jesus. So it's more than just we want to get them here. We want them to show up. Yeah. We want them to keep coming back every week. It's, it's our strategy is laser focused around how are teenagers actually experiencing the life that they were created to live by Jesus. So that was a really, really big one for, for yeah, us. Yeah, man, kind of that's powerful. Me. Well, and everything yeah. else builds off your strategy, man, right? Like exactly. that's the, exactly. That you've got to have a real strong foundation. That's a great way. Unapologetic strategy. Okay, great, man. Shoot me. What's the next one? What you got? Yeah. The next thing I was thinking about is, is this, you have to keep volunteer care first. So as a youth pastor, this is incredibly counterintuitive because you want to spend time with teenagers, right? Like, like that's that's yeah. what I got into this for. I love teenagers, and 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 we talk about this often, but it's a lot harder to do uh, than, than it is to say. But but you have to keep volunteers first. So for us, I mean, that's been simple things over these past few years, as easy as creating a lounge space for our volunteers that has some snacks in it, that has a coffee maker when they're coming from work or they w- woke up early or whatever else, they can pop in there and get a cup of coffee. Um, we, we have a mini fridge with LaCroix, which I prefer yeah. Perrier because I'm, I'm bougie. As I think oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, LaCroix and, and some water bottles, just something simple like that where you may go, hey, I don't, I don't know that I have the budget for that. But if you take a little bit of your budget and invest in just caring for volunteers in simple ways, it, it makes a world of difference. So I think doing little things like that and, and caring for them, but also we, we've implemented a coach's strategy and having, uh, we have a team of leaders who lead our small group leaders and give them individualized, personalized care. And, and, and just thinking that way has, has been massively um, important for us and has really changed the impact that, that I think the ministry, ultimately Jesus, that the ministry is having in the lives of teenagers. So um, that's been a big one for me to go, Hey, I- I'm in this cause I love teenagers and Jesus loves teenagers. And, and that's what this is all about. But if-, if we lead their leaders really well and care for them well, we're going to be having a much bigger impact. 
Bro, that is that's so powerful, man. And it's so it's so easy, right, to be counterintuitive and to be like, well, man, I how many kids did you have tonight? You know, like that's the yeah, that's exactly. the, the old like which can be unhealthy. I mean, it's important, right? But like yeah. it can be unhealthy if we focus too much on that. And at the same time, like, man, how many leaders that you have and have you elevated small group leaders and able to connect them to parents and have them feel valuable, man. That's that's gold. Okay. Um, you got one more for us? Yeah, I do. Uh, Great. Oh, one more. This one's super practical, and it's, it's changed so much in our ministry in a positive way. It's boosted it forward um, massively, but it's just this principle we have of the last 5%. And it could be last 5%, last 2%, whatever else. But in almost every meeting we have, I know every every Monday in our production meeting and all of those things, we finish our meetings with the last 5%. And, and that's us looking around the room, getting everybody an opportunity to contribute and go, okay, what are those small details that we haven't talked about yet, that we haven't pressed into, but that you're noticing and we need to do something about? So uh, these these are, hey, um, you know what? I, I noticed that the stage was a little bit dirty when we started services this week. Like, should we be vacuuming that on a regular basis? You know, to, uh, I walked into this small group space and it was a little bit cluttered. Um, we should probably be better prepared that way or whatever else it may be. It's really practical. But but the idea is this. If you get 5% better every week, eventually you'll be 100% better than you were. And, and that yeah. just continues to build and continues to grow. So we're constantly looking at the last 5% and going, okay, how can this be 5% better? What's the what's the 5% we can do that will that will push us uh, far forward if, if we stick to this and, and continue to, to improve? So that's a big one yeah. for our team. And everybody on our team, I'm really grateful, embodies that and thinks that way. Uh, but it's really helpful. Yeah, man, that, that, that's fire because dude, there's such a difference – it's a small difference, but it makes such a huge difference between just kind of like that, that, that B plus and that A. And what is that? And it's yeah. those things that like, you know, your ministry isn't going to fall apart if you don't have those, but yeah. man, it just takes it to the next level of what people notice. So man, sure. strategy, volunteers, then first class, man, last 5%. Dude, those are powerful and they're great. Thank you for sharing with those, man. I think that, um, I think I think our viewers are really going to take take a shine to this and love it, and, and it's good, man. Shane, I know you're a busy guy, man. I appreciate your time and, and helping us out here at Ministry Boost, and uh, man, it's it's just been great conversation. Thanks, Kevin. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for letting me be a part. I hope this helps somebody, and I'm really excited for Ministry Boost. I think it's going to be yeah uh, an amazing, amazing thing. Awesome. Thanks, Shane. Appreciate thanks. it.